Celeste Moy is going to be on here in a moment. She is a partner with the Ramon Law Firm in their Entertainment Sports and Media Practice Group. Ms. Moy has extensive music and entertainment law experience, primarily representing songwriters and their successors and in interest in disputes over royalty payments and royalty monetization transactions, copyright assignment terminations, and recaptures. I told you, we need attorneys. We need lawyers. As well as negotiating and drafting various times of entertainment contracts for recording and performing artists and music producers. She also helps her clients to obtain trademark registrations and trademark license agreements for use of their logos and creative works in connection with advertising, marketing materials, and merchandise. In addition to her law practice, Ms. Moy and her brother, Christopher Moy, are co-managers of the estate of Sylvia Moy LLC doing business as Masterpiece Sound Studios. Masterpiece was established by Sylvia Moy, the award-winning American songwriter, record producer, inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame in 2006, and the first First woman songwriter producer for Motown Records with 11 gold and eight platinum album awards. Since its founding in 1973, Masterpiece Sound Studios has worked with and produced certified gold and platinum records for Grammy nominated and award winning artists. I think you can see why I, I'm so looking forward to this conversation. We're also going to be talking about something very special that uh, Celeste and, uh, and those who are now managing the estate of Sylvia Moy have established that is in the works, in the midst for this year right now. So without uh, any further rambling on my part, let's welcome Celeste Moy. Celeste, welcome to Coffee Breaks with Steve. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me. I'm glad to join you today. Well, if, if your credentials and background are interesting, and I want to talk a little bit about that and about your work in the entertainment industry. But I think before we even get into that, the rest of this conversation is going to be somewhat moot if we don't talk a little bit about your sister, Sylvia. Oh, yes. Thank you for your opening remarks. You covered a lot uh, <laughs> about her in your remarks, but I, I can add a few additional points um, that I, lo I love to mention. Um, Sylvia was, as you, in, as you stated, the first, uh, Motown's first female songwriter producer. And while she was at Motown, she actually wrote and co-wrote uh, about 150 different songs. You may know some of them. My Sharia Moore, thank you for playing that as your intro. Yeah. But um, Uptight, This So Heart of Mine, My Baby Loves Me and It Takes Two are also among the songs that she wrote and co-wrote. Uh, she was such a wonderful sister. I, I, I actually have um, nine, uh, there were nine of us. <laughs> uh, she wow. was number two. <laughs> Um, and we have the eight siblings, her heirs have uh, formed uh, Estate of Sylvia Moy LLC. Uh, and um, as you mentioned, we launched in June of 2022, our cover song contest uh, as part of our mission to promote and preserve the legacy of Sylvia Moy. Sylvia really firmly believed in the idea that great songs could be covered and reinterpreted by, in many different ways by different artists. Uh, she just did not like the idea of a composition being associated with one, one hit version by a particular artist. So she would often say to us, a good song is a good song. And without a song, there are no hits. Oh. <laughs> that, was, that was one of her uh, uh, comments she would often repeat to her siblings. Wow. Well, you know, I mean, again, we talk about the history and the songs she wrote and artists she worked with. I mean, there's so many people through really, I think, the... Um, the rise of Motown and, and really the R&B genre as a, a key element of art and entertainment in this country. And it's, it's spread all over the world. This isn't just an American thing. It's not just a Detroit Motown thing anymore. Right, Celeste? I mean, this is oh, and, uh, true. 
That's absolutely true. But here's the here's the um, mission behind the cover song contest. Yes. The contest is about the sustainability of other songs. You're so familiar with the usual uh, mm -hmm. Motown artists, uh, Smokey Robinson, the Jackson Five, Stevie Wonder, the Tops and the Temps, and the songs that they obviously made famous. But there's so many other songs written by great Motown songwriters that you don't get to hear and enjoy as often. So our goal with the cover song contest was to reintroduce these other songs and they have been covered by today's emerging artists in so many different creative ways. And I really am so excited that we're having our grand finale show on April 20th so that everybody will get to hear these talented emerging artists. You know, uh, let's talk a little bit about um, that, the contest itself and kind of how that, the course of the contest, because all the preliminaries have taken place. You're now getting into the finals, the showcase of this that's happening um, in just, what, a couple of weeks now. That's right. And yes. talk a little bit about sort of the, the progression, perhaps, of, you know, people applying to to be part of the contest, how those those early rounds work, just kind of out of curiosity, what happens to get to the point of this finale that's about to take oh, place on the 20th? I'm happy to do that. And what a journey it has been. We launched in June of 2022. The contest was launched by Masterpiece Sound Studios in partnership with Sony Music Publishing. And we launched the show, the contest, in all 50 states, including the District of Columbia and Puerto Rico. We got nearly 500 people to register for the contest and we received over 100 entries in the contest from people from 20 different states. Goodness. So by any measure, it has been a huge success and we are so um, excited that we are now at the point where the 11 finalists, who by the way, were selected by many of the original songwriters of the 10 selected Motown songs wow. in the contest. So in those songs, uh, there were 10 and you had 10 selected genres that the contestants could, could choose from to create their covers, but the 10 songs were actually written by 13 different former Motown songwriters, 14 of them. Goodness. Um, and we're just so excited that they were so happy to be a part of it. But let me tell you, it was not an easy task because we told them they could only select 10 finalists. And you know, <laughs> I just said we had 11. <laughs> yeah. Because they, we just couldn't get them to 10. Um, mm. We kept trying, but they were all so good. And all the while we, they were going through the um, selection process, I kept saying, and my siblings as well, I'm so glad we're not a judge because there is no way I would know how to select the finalists. But I'm very, very pleased with what they ended up, who, the ones that ended up in that category. A couple of other things about that. I think when you and I were speaking earlier, you were talking about some of the artists who are finalists presenting. We think about these Motown songs, these R&B hits, or, or maybe songs that weren't as big hits, but I think people, and oftentimes they're going to hear them, they're going to go, oh yeah, I do remember that one. I do remember listening to that. Maybe it was the B-side of a record. Maybe it was somewhere else on an album. But they're not always necessarily, again, there's an individuality to this idea of covering songs and doing it so that you honor the original, but still make it your own. And I think there are some unique presentations as part of this. And you're going to hear them in the show. Um, many of the, the uh, contestants weren't even born when these so songs were released. So look what they had to do in order to become the finalists. They had to find the songs. They had to select the one they wanted to cover. Mm -hmm. Then they had to learn the songs and we had to post the lyrics literally on our website to yeah. assist them. 
then they had to decide, well, which genre do I want to use to produce my particular cover? And you know what, Steve? <laughs> they did it. And it is simply a wonder how well they did it. Wow. You can hear one particular song done in four different genres, four different covers that are <laughs> totally different, but equally compelling. You will be entertained and very, very surprised at what what uh, these emerging artists came up with. My gosh. So what is this? So, so the, at, presumably, there is there a point where there is then a winner that is identified as part of this finale and what is what is yeah. the prize for for being a finalist and or for winning the cover song contest there will be three winners first second and third place winners they will receive cash awards up to twenty five thousand dollars and the opportunity to have their cover represented by Sony Music Publishing for sync opportunities. And you know, Sony is the number one music publisher in the world. So when they represent your sync, you've got a good chance of really becoming uh, tomorrow's great uh, performing artist, uh, mm -hmm. an award-winning performing artist. So we are so really proud and excited for these finalists. Um, but let me tell you, three will be the winners, but we consider all 11 of them winners because remember we had over 100 contestants. Goodness. And to get to 11, you had to be really good. They are all good. And we are going, we being Masterpiece Sound Studios will release all 11 of these covers that we have mastered for their performance after the show. So all of them That's are amazing. Winning. And you have uh, you have an MC for that finale as well. Yeah, we do. I'm so proud of that. We have as our celebrity show host, the actor comedian, uh, Omar Gooding. And we are so happy to have him to join us as our celebrity host. He's really looking forward to it. He's a music guy himself. Mm -hmm. Uh, and he so, comes from a musical family, actually. I mean, a lot of people may not realize that. They they may recognize Omar's name or they may connect him with his brother, Cuba Gooding Jr., but their parents right. were it, musical. That was part well. of the main ingredient. That was the recording uh, artist that, yes, this is a very musical and talented family. And we are so happy to have Omar Gooding as our celebrity uh, show host. Well, we get to the end, we're going to talk a little bit more about how people might be able to participate either in person or at some point, perhaps, um, to see this this finale. And you've already talked about the fact that there will be opportunities for people to find the music. And we'll we'll be sharing all of that. I want to just a little bit now briefly, I know that this is something that's still kind of in the works, but part of the entire process of continuing to to honor your sister's legacy is that you have established a foundation in her name as well that has a mission. Yes, yes, we have quite a, a robust mission for our foundation because Sylvia really was so ahead of her time. She uh, established her own publishing company called Musiki Publishing after Motown. She wrote hmm. and co-wrote and produced another 200 songs that have not been released, but we are yeah. determined to do so. Uh, she created her own label, Michigan Satellite Records. We are now redesigning uh, that logo. It will be the Masterpiece Satellite Records label, and we will be releasing our cover song uh, in the show under our new label and label design. But Sylvia also had a mission to continue to teach young people the art of songwriting, the R&B genre in particular, and not just the R&B genre, jazz and mm. classical and all, but to encourage young people who have an interest in music and are talented to continue to use those talents uh, to produce the music of uh, that we will continue to enjoy into the future. Nice. 
And it's not, it doesn't just stop with the songwriters and the performing artists, but there are also people, the young people who are being trained to be engineers and, and producers for Absolutely. this industry. And yeah. Yes, yes. That is also part of our mission for our foundation to train them. Well, that's a little bit selfish in a way for us because we want to continue to have good. Uh, sound engineers and music mm -hmm. video producers as part of Masterpiece. So if we train them, that's yeah. certainly going to uh, help us to do that. Well, it may be selfish, but just I just think about how much that's going to continue to put the music out before all of us, that we all, we all get to enjoy that selfishness, Celeste. So I have no problem with that. I want to talk just for a minute about your background and, and the work that you do, because you work very much within that, aside from what you were doing to support Sylvia's legacy, you yourself working as an attorney within the entertainment genre. I mean, you've supported some of the, the artists. I would yes. assume that your, that your sister helped to write music for as, as well as many others. Oh, absolutely. That, that is so true. As a matter of fact, I became an attorney <laughs> with the sole purpose of uh, protecting and um, collecting, helping my sister to collect the royalties for the songs that she had wow. written and co-written. And uh, I have continued to do that throughout my career, but I also primarily represent songwriters. And I continue to primarily represent songwriters for the same purposes and their as you mentioned earlier, successors in mm -hmm. interest. Uh, until the Music Modernization Act was passed in 2018. And when that passed, I started, I expanded my practice to include um, emerging artists, musicians, background singers, um, uh, and uh, producers um, mm -hmm. who are now, who now have rights to receive royalties and opportunities to exploit their contributions to music and uh, under the law. So wow. it is a great time to be an attorney. I really love what I do. I really love the people that I represent. And I'm just, you know, happy that uh, my sister um, let me into it. But I have persisted because I love it. Well, there's a lot out there. I think a lot of people don't really realize if they haven't been involved. There's a lot within the entertainment industry, within media, within music that has both that contractual, making sure the contracts themselves are set up in a way that does not exploit, uh, unfairly exploit songwriters, artists, etc. There's a lot that overlaps into intellectual property that we don't always think about in terms of just protecting even the the branding and the and the representation of images and, and audio and a variety of other things. So thank you for doing that, Celeste. It's, it's important. And once again, it, um, it's one of those things that we, we don't always think about, you know, how we get involved in, in many of the things that we get involved in as we're, we had on that special days list, the, the National Siblings Appreciation Day. I just think about how many times we are influenced in so many ways in our lives by our siblings. And, uh, and in our careers, just in our life decisions. And I would imagine with, you said there were nine of you in, in, in your family? Yes. There had yes. to be a lot of influence. <laughs> we were actually three sets of threes. I'm, I'm in the middle three. I'm the middle, middle <laughs> um, sibling of the middle three. Wow. So we never all lived together. Uh, we, I don't know what my parents were thinking about, but uh, we spent <laughs> a few years. Uh, so there's three sets of threes. And it, it was interesting after Sylvia passed, um, you know, we inherited such a valuable um, estate from her, not only her Motown catalog, but the 200 songs she wrote after Motown, the building that, she uh, used for her business, her publishing wow. company, you know, and the royalties from her at <laughs> her um, catalog. We could have just divided it all up, you know, sure, taking what we really wanted and gone on. But um, without any hesitation, without any arguments among us, we decided collectively 
to promote and preserve the legacy of our sister Sylvia Moy, which is really bigger than the catalog of Sylvia Moy. It's yeah. all songwriters and the great songs that they write. That's perfect. I want to, we're going to get short on time here, but I want to talk a little bit and let you share a little bit about what, how people might, um, and if they're if they are in or can be in the Detroit area for the finale, we're going to be putting some information even in the chat here about where tickets are available for the show. But obviously, not everybody can get to Detroit to see the finale. So we want to make sure once again, you kind of repeat what the plans are to get the music out where people can hear it. But also, if there are any future plans to potentially uh, have the 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 cover song contest available through any streaming services or anything like that, where people might be able to tune in and see it later on. Well, we certainly hope so. And we intend to make that available and um, tickets are still on sale uh, for the show. It will be Thursday, April 20th at the Motor City Casino Hotel soundboard, an absolutely beautiful venue. Uh, it will be, Doors open at six, the show starts at seven. Uh, and I mentioned our host and our 11 finalists who will be performing. Um, Ticketmasters are available. The tickets are available on Ticketmaster under the lo our logo cover song contest grand finale show. Please, please do uh, visit Ticketmaster if you are gonna be in Detroit or near Detroit or can get to Detroit so that you can enjoy the show live. We do have the opportunity to have our show rebroadcast by Tubi, on Tubi. Okay. It will be rebroadcast. And we are continuing to explore other um, opportunities to, um, to, for streaming the show after the show. We will release all 11 of the cover songs that will be performed in our show after April 20th. Nice. So uh, it, we want you to continue to enjoy these emerging mm -hmm. artists and their covers and what a show it will be. Well, and, and uh, I will just mention here that we will continue to track that uh, with you and make sure that we are updating everything and promoting anything that, uh, that is available on our sites. Uh, the Facebook site, as well as uh, on YouTube and any place else that we have. We have the Coffee Breaks with Steve Roundtable. If you're not already following that, that's where we do a lot of the follow-up uh, Q&A and, and just updates and, and information about guests and topics we've had on the show. So I invite you to make sure that you're looking there as well. But Celeste Moy, thank you very much for taking the time to be here today, to sharing, uh, for sharing the information about your sister Sylvia, her legacy and the important work that she did for this industry, the important work that you are continuing to do through your advocacy and through this uh, cover song contest in the foundation. So blessings to you and thank you so much. Thank you so much, Steve, for having me. All right. Bye now. Bye-bye. All right. Well, listen, we're going to wrap things up uh, here and uh, just want to also say thank you to all of you for taking the time. If you once again, if you tuned in live today, we want to encourage you to continue to track what's going on. You can continue to put your comments in the chat. Uh, they'll be available if you tune in later to watch this. We want to make sure that you know that you can also put your comments and your questions and information in the chat. Celeste will actually have access to the uh, Facebook page in this and the recording of this uh, session after the show and she'll be able to see all of the comments and and the questions that may have come up so if you have questions for celeste if you want to know more about the cover song contest obviously you can go online to the masterpiece sound studios.com is the web website where you can see information about the cover song contest you can learn more about sylvia moy herself and uh, and see other things that they that they are doing and will be continuing to do with the foundation established in Sylvia's name. I uh, just also want to let you know very quickly, here's some things that are coming up in the next few weeks. Uh, next week, we're going to have a return guest, our our favorite uh, bibliophile and, and book expert, Ann Davis East, will be back with us to talk about some more authors and books on her bookshelf that she recommends uh, for the rest of us to read as we get into our spring and summer reading. 
And then in two weeks, we're going to be talking about financial etiquette. This is something that's sort of come more to the forefront in recent months, although it's not a new topic. But talking about and thinking about what are some of the protocols and the and the norms and etiquette. You know, a couple of weeks ago, we uh, had Analia Young on talking about etiquette and manners in general. We're going to be focusing on financial etiquette, things like what's appropriate for tipping in this day and age. We have a lot of there's a lot of controversy about that, not only when you're in a restaurant. What about delivery services? So many of us are using those delivery services now. What's appropriate for tipping? How do you determine what's appropriate? What are the measures for that? What about um, splitting checks? You know, do you ever have that awkwardness when you go into a restaurant with a, another couple or in someone else and you get to the end of the meal and now you're going, oh, let's see, were we going to split the check and how are we splitting it? We can talk about that as well as just in general, financial etiquette about things uh, borrowing or, or lending money, making gifts of money, donations, that type of thing. So we'll have some conversation about that. It's, I think it's a very interesting and timely topic. And then in three weeks, we're going to be meeting with another, uh, I think, amazing guest, uh, Leanne Jashue, uh, who is a comic and a, and a humor expert. She does a lot with corporations and groups to talk about humor in the workplace and humor in social settings. She's also just hilarious. And, uh, you're going to have the chance to spend some time with Leanne, who refers to herself as the accidental comic. She'll tell you about how she fell into doing comedy and, and humor as part of, uh, of both her career and her life. And just a reminder that if you have ideas for topics you'd like to see us discuss or you have ideas about guests you'd like to see on the show, you can email me at cbwsteve at comcast.net to share your ideas. One uh, final reminder that if you uh, are tuning in later on, tuning in at some point to watch the recordings of this. We want to know that you were here, so make sure you introduce yourself. And just also a reminder that in addition to Facebook and YouTube, uh, which happen live and then the recordings are available, we are also have, after the fact, within 48 hours, you can find Coffee Breaks with Steve episodes on Spotify, and that's both video and audio as well as the audio on Apple and Google Podcasts. So it's another place you can refer people. Spread the word about this. I'm not so much concerned about building thousands of followers for myself, but we're having such amazing topics and guests on here. I want to make sure that more, more and more people are learning about that. So just invite you to make sure that, uh, that we're sharing the word and getting that out to people. Once again, I want to say thank you to Celeste Moy for being here. Um, this, is, uh, this is a week to remember our siblings. And, uh, you know, we think about people like Sylvia Moy, whose legacy is so important. But in addition to her legacy and her history, she was a sister. She was a, a relative. And then just kind of looking into this next week, uh, my siblings and I lost a sister three years ago this coming week. And so we want to honor all of those uh, whose legacies are important to us. Once again, I want to thank you for being here. And I want to remind you, boy, we, all, we all have something that we can share. So please find a way to make a difference in your world this week. God bless you. Have a great week.